everybody. Welcome to Furs to Feathers Mini Farm. And uh, if you found our channel, hopefully this is a good introduction to what we have and a few things to what we're going to do. So just a brief overview, um, nothing more, we're not going to go into details. And keep in mind, continuous improvement is part of our plan on our farm here. Um, what we have now is always temporary as we move into um, pigs into pasture and um, ducks back into the pond and why are they out of the pond now uh, all that will be on future videos uh, this is just a hello welcome to us and this is what we have so I'll walk you through real quick of the different animals we have and um, our plants just briefly okay so if you look here you see our Kuni Kuni pigs and we have registered all registered except for one female which is the spotted girl right there okay and um, dozer he's on the other side with the baby pigs uh, from our IPP but um, pregnant yes maybe a few of them um, our big boy smash here I think is doing the job fairly well but these are our Kuni Kuni pigs and we give them lots of hay and a little bit of fermented feed as well um, their enclosures inside of there um, so this is where they're at now but we are planning on moving them over to the wooded padded um, for probably the remainder of their their life as as we do things and as we grow um, giving them a lot more space and um, foliage to uh, mow down on uh, alfalfa is great and fermented is even better but they like to have some good green stuff that's right off the ground you know so anyways, um, we'll take you back to over here and just a slight overview. Yes, we have a bunch of ducks. At one time we had over 200. Um, got some piggies and some different piggies and I'll explain why in a sec. Um, so our feeder pigs and a pot belly. Right, guys we were given some pot bellies for free eight of them and um, they are not part of our typical business plan they are uh, rescue to freezer camp and uh, if that offends you sorry this channel may not be for you as we um, go further into our daily journeys um, we are farm we grow for pets we also grow for meat so uh, that's part of what we do um, sustainability for us and growth and opportunity for the farm and the community around us um, so only one that will have partake in these uh, pot bellies will be us as that's not something that we're going to offer customers and people uh, our feeder pigs were part of a plan to help some friends and family um, buy some pigs we'll feed them and um, raise them for them process them for them at an extremely low cost just at cost feed and, and purchase right um, taking care of our family is what we're supposed to do our duckers well we started out with a lot and we lost quite a few through a lot of different things and there will be a video on that um, the do's and don'ts of our mistakes they are all in a pen right now as our um, fairly large pond got treated for an algae bloom and the rest of it's clear over there and we got some I believe out just uh, top growth algae now which we're going to confirm once that's confirmed and it's not harmful the ducks will be in there cleaning that up in no time and we have some turkeys I'm gonna pause and we'll go over there real quick so this is our very temporary spot these guys grow quick I have a turkey tractor that we're going to make and they'll foliage, uh, but they also get dry dry feed, which we put in the bucket there. And they also get fermented and with alfalfa, um, which they eat quite a bit of. Um, you see some on the ground there, a little bit of waste, but literally a bucket's worth of feed, five gallon bucket worth, approximately 20 pounds when we do it. But <laughs> getting their chirps on. Yes, yeah, so we got a few red bourbons, some black slates, uh, royal palm. I think we're going to keep her for a breeder. She's quite beautiful. And 
Um, let's take a look at our... Sorry for that, guys. Uh, take a look at our duckers. So we have a temporary little uh, spot for them to go out of the sun and heat. They get in there. Uh, Got to do some more watering today. We put a bunch of water in, and then we dump it, and then we put more water in as they are ducks. They are messy, and that's just their given nature. Um, but yeah, we lots of different breeds from from Pekins to Muscovies and Rowans, Khakis, and some mixes that we were given. They were uh, extremely cheap, and uh, yeah. So that's where these guys are now. This, there's an electric fence because it was a um, temporary, this is a temporary spot that we put animals that are sick, injured, or whatever else, and uh, you know, for pigs or whatever, so we don't have to set it all up. It's already good, and we put them in there if we have to. We haven't had to, except for the ducks, because of the uh, pond, but you gotta have a backup, right? So, that's all our duckers. Yeah, they're pretty cool guys. Yeah, I like these guys. Oh, we got a buff. We got one or two buffs left. Look at big and pretty. Yeah. And yes, we do checks on them as far as we check their chest plate, make sure they're getting plenty of food. They get a 100% fermented alfalfa along with a little bit of turkey feed and corn to add a little bit of fat and the minerals that they could be um, missing from not being out foraging. So, um, but. 80% of their feed is alfalfa, and they do a good job at knocking it down. I, I give four buckets an approximately total weight, including some water weight in there, is 20, 40s, about 80 pounds worth, give or take. A duck will eat, on average, they should have at minimum a half a pound of food for a large duck a day. Look at that guy's crap. <laughs> he is full. Yeah. Um, so half a pound of feed, so we make sure that they get that at minimum um, through the alfalfa and then we add corn in to add a little bit of fat as the alfalfa doesn't have much fat and they need a little bit of that to keep them uh, good and healthy. And the turkey feed we use that um, sparingly but it has more vitamins and minerals in there that they could need um, and as we do more research later we'll We'll draw our conclusions on if the turkey feed is necessary on top of the alfalfa or not. So, all right, stick with me. We're gonna walk around and we're gonna go see some baby pigs and an IPP. Why can't I say IPP pig? Uh, her name is Big Mama. She just had a litter and they're two months old, so they're gonna be weaned this week. And we got some rabbits and just a few quail, just a handful, but we used to have a couple hundred. We're gonna go back into that. That's another fun adventure coming along. So hold on a second for you, but a few minutes for me to walk around and we'll go look at some other other animals. You don't get much more adorable than that. <laughs> Sweet girl. Yes, you are. That's Harley, and she's our AKC registered beautiful girl yes had some puppies and we're working on the last puppy being sold now and she was bred with our full Siberian Husky yeah he's like yeah right whatever he's a good boy yeah. dark brown Siberian Husky and our plans for our puppies will be um, to be determined let's just put it that way and I say that because well we did well this year is a different year for sales and marketing we're not going to talk about that right now um, but it's not your typical year so we're a little unsure if we're going to continue with the mixed breed um, offering a little bit better lifespan on the Bernese Mountain Dog with the same temperament of the Bernese Mountain Dog um, just because their average lifespan is six to eight years and it's quite short, which means our girl Harley, um, yeah, she won't live as long as um, our boy Odin. Um, so we knew that going in, but we were hoping to create a um, lineage that a little bit longer lifespan and the great temperament of the Bernese. So 
uh, we'll see what we get. Uh, so far, they're doing pretty well. The puppy sold. And we have one girl left with a family that's that looked at her. And they're going to let us know in a few hours. Um, this family did really good on asking all the right questions. And lots of great things. So made me very happy. Um, all right. Keep in mind, you're going to see our house. You're gonna see <laughs> our farm. We are struggling a little bit this year. Uh, we went through a growth spurt last year that was really large. We had 100 plus rabbits and a couple hundred quail, um, ostrich, we had tons of ostrich. And we thought we were doing something different, decided that we're not. And so we're building back in. Um, I'd be extremely happy if we had ostriches on the ground by the end of the year. Um, may not happen, but uh, we'll see. Maybe next year, beginning of next year. I don't know. I'd love to have them back on the property. Great birds. Lots of fun. Not very smart, but lots of fun. They're pretty cool. Um, so here we are. We're coming up on our rabbit cages. Uh, these are the cages that we have for now. The engineered cages that I had prior. If I can find a picture, I'll put it in, um, I'll put it in here so you guys can see it. Um, those hutches were were wonderful they were a three tier a little tall for shorter people um, but they were a three tier with a gutter in the front um, manure go into the gutter they were on an angle as well so the urine would go to one side of the gutter go down a tube go down to the next gutter all the way to the third one and that one would drain outside into a bucket which you can collect the urine and then sell or use um, as fertilizer along with the manure or just straight fertilizer and mix it with water. I'm getting into a lot, but that, that wasn't my point. Sorry. Um, but there's purpose for it and we had a lot better setup and I'm not very proud of our setup now. It does well, um, but I want to get back where we were. We were doing really good. So uh, keep that in mind if, you know, negative reviews and people that are looking know where we're at is it where we're staying okay okay so it's got a palomino and I'm just gonna show you a few just just a brief overview a few cages here um, got some baby bunnies in here that need to come out uh, they they're getting upsized they've been upsized let's put it that way got some little tiny squigglies in there and some more inside here uh, yes that is a hay shredder and yes we do shred our own hay and I need to get ooh, a bunch more hay um, as that is our main diet for just about everybody. Uh, even our rabbits get some hay, uh, alfalfa. But when giving the rabbits alfalfa, do your research. They can't have it every day, all day. It's too much for them because they process everything so well. Um, it, it, can, it can mess them up. But I'll come back over here real quick. So these are our feed barrels. I put, I put a topper on there. Um, we soak them down and get plenty of bubbles. Some of them are just air, but we ferment quite a bit of hay. I just got done feeding, so this is sitting out in the sun a little bit, but I'll wrap that up in a second. Um, anything that looks like that gets scraped up, does not get fed to the animals, FYI, um, as it's not healthy uh, bacteria that's on top. So we scrape anything that's blacker, non-appealing, off and this one's been sitting it's just been empty for a little while so it's needs to be redone but if you have the white good growth again that wasn't my purpose to, to go into all this but here um, <clears throat> different stages different barrels and quite a bit of feed all right so so we got some bunnies in here and like I said a handful of quail we just got them so we got to give them a different little setup these guys are just a uh, little tiny Need some more feed, and yes, they are wasting a lot. We have to, we know how to make non waste feeders, so I don't need a bunch of comments on that. We do know how to do it, we are very, very busy. Um, and I gotta do some more cage cleanouts. But this is our, our rabbit setup for now. They will be going into our pole barn right here, so we're gonna make a hole here maybe for a door, or we're just gonna use the front door that's over here. 
uh, and that's going to be for rabbits and quail and um, better setup more fluid setup I should say as well so that's us in a nutshell here and let's go see some baby pigs And we have some baby ducks in here, just a few left. Where are you guys at? Oh, yeah, they're peeking at me. <laughs> yeah, we got some baby duckers in there. About ten. A little more feathers so they can come out. Oh, I don't know why I opened the gate. You're not going to come out, though. This is our IPP. Two little fins, the nursing that happens uh, as they're staying healthy. Hey, no, you know you're not supposed to come through here. Come on. Yeah, there you go. Stay back. Um, he is not IPP. He's a kidney cone. Non-registered dozer. Uh, he has a pretty good build on him, so we're keeping him. What's that about, buddy? Uh, we took him out of the big pen with the other, with the other boars and stuff because as they do that nudging with their nose, it's fine. But when they have tusks, it hurts them. So um, he's just a little fish in a big fish pond. And so we brought him over here with the, these other little guys that are two months old. They're IPPs. He was born in April. They're only two months old. It's the beginning of August. Guess what? Those guys grow quick. And so <laughs> uh, no more feeding. Yes, Mama. I know. So what we're going to do is get her um, with, the other, with the other pigs. Get her settled down away from the feet, the babies. So we'll get her settled down, um, gain, get some weight gain back on her, and um, once she's good and ready, then we'll get her bred. The baby pigs will stay by themselves, and the cooney, little baby cooney coon, he'll stay with them too. That'll uh, give them company, and um, they get along real well. So these guys will go into the wooded paddock that we are still setting up i know it's august i know we're late yes uh, kind of an unexpected litter too she, we were told she was going to be pregnant but, okay i may have to edit some of this out it's kind of turned into a longer video i apologize what i wanted to do was just give a brief overview that we have ipps we have cooney coons and rabbits and chickens, I don't know if you saw any of them, but they're floating around. This guy, I have a meat chicken that is about five pounds. We don't feed them. We don't feed any of them. Well, okay. <laughs> they get fed, but they're all going through the grass. They get the corn that the um, other animals miss, the smaller particles, the bugs. Uh, we check the weight on them. Not easy, but they're good. They're pretty healthy. So really thankful on that. Um, even that meat chickens, they have tendency to, you know, that's what they do, right? So with the different animals, with our feeding program, which we will go over in better detail on a, a different video, and that one will be at least a one part, maybe two part. But this is our farm. A couple gravity wagons, horse trailer, flat trailers, pool, pond, animals. Just living it up. So as we grow, we hope to uh, grow into the community of what people want. We offer typically niche items, um, so not very common, ducks, coony coon pigs, IPPs, rabbits would be more popular, um, quail, uh, coming popular, but still not, it's not your run of the mill um, animal, right? Uh, and ostrich. And I got six videos already done on that, so you can check those out. Uh, we will do more videos when we get more birds. Um, I've had a lot of people asking lately, when are you going to do more more videos? Well, we don't have the birds. I could do a um, lessons learned and a few other things on them. That's kind of summarized in some of the other videos. But I would like to have the birds here when I'm talking about them, when we're going through stuff. I tried to include the animals more than my bearded face so you guys can enjoy them instead of staring at me all right um so got a couple acres we're somewhat renting the acreage next to us um through um 
just a good friendship through a neighbor, uh, raising some animals for him, and a little bit of back and forth of other stuff, and it's been good. So, our farm as we grow will change daily, it changes regularly as we speak already, and as we keep growing, um, we'll bring in more animals and uh, making sure that we're doing good on the property and doing good on the animals for sustainability. So, uh, you don't want them to just kill the ground as they have in their paddocks and that happens, but we want them being rotatable. Same thing with their chickens, they'll be out on the front front yard, which I call my front pasture because that's what it's gonna be. Um, yeah, lots of great stuff going on, lots of different things that we do, um, different than other, other people, and some mainstream, but I haven't found anyone that does 50, 50 gallon barrels full of alfalfa fermented and feeds a couple hundred ducks with it. Otherwise, we couldn't afford it. You know, 120, 150 ducks right now, you're, you're looking at 60 plus pounds of feed a day. That'd be real expensive real quick. But we take a 900,000 pound bale of hay, shred it, and make it into feed and then add as we need for grain and other stuff, right? Um, and then we offer the pond to them when it gets cleaned up. So a lot more to discuss on all these different types of items and things. Um, like I said, this is Furs to Feathers Mini Farm. And this is our life journey. So if this interests you and you wanna see more different things throughout as we're going along, mistakes that we've made, I'll share those, and some of them are pretty, just dumb mistakes. Uh, but lessons learned, and we won't repeat it. And all the good things that we've done, that's been very helpful, and hopefully helpful to other people as well. So, if this video is too long, leave me a comment. Maybe I'll uh, adjust the video, shrink it down in size, and then uh, people can see everything on a more condensed view if you think that would be helpful to others. So leave me a comment below. And if you're new, subscribe, hit that bell, and be blessed.